I want to start with, I've seen the seven episodes of season two already uh, that I got access to, and they're real good. I laughed out loud a number of times. At, uh, oh, cool. Thanks. It's really good. I'm going to actually say that I did enjoy it more than the first season. Um, yeah. I don't know if that matters to you at all, but um, I really enjoyed it. Um, well, I've, I've mostly with most of the things that I've worked on, um, you know, people say that they they always seem to say like, well, the first scene, but then I really liked it. And I, I kind of think that that's partly um, a feature of character comedy because you don't really know who the characters are in the beginning and the jokes are coming from who the characters are often. <coughs> so once you learn, oh, that's typical, you know, Tony Scarapaducci joke, then you kind of appreciate it more. But the other thing is that we, uh, Steve and I were very much in the mind of not making it like The Office in the beginning. Um, we were trying to make it very cinematic. And what happened uh, when we stopped the first season was we, we sat down and he was like, well, that wasn't that much fun <laughs> to make it that cinematic because you know, <clears throat> when, you're, when you're shooting something like a movie, especially when you're really caring about the look of it, there's a lot of downtime while they're lighting. And, you know, the thing that Steve was, is so brilliant at and was used to from the office is the ability to kind of improvise with the other actors. And, you know, afterwards we looked at our, sort of what we had to work with and we were like, well, the cast is amazing. The cast that we've assembled for Space Force, it's a shame to, you know, make them just shoot one side and then wait and relight, and you know what I mean? As opposed to like having a more flexible shooting pattern where they can play off each other and have fun with it and improvise. And so um, in addition to Norm Hiscock, the other big creative change we did was we brought in the guy who directed the pilot of The Office in a lot of our biggest episodes, uh, this guy, Ken Quapis. And yeah, and he's so much about protecting the performance energy on the set, you know, for the cast so that they can relax and not worry about the mechanics of shooting it. And, um, and he's also super good at shooting comedy, um, which is somewhat different than the sort of uh, like Kubricky kind of thing we were going for season one, right? <laughs> so um, <clears throat> yeah, so we kind of, you know, we, we saw what was working and we, we tried to fix it. So I'm glad you like it because I think it came out great this season. I, I legitimately laughed out loud a few times. Um, cool. So when, when you went into Netflix to, you know, to sell the idea or they bought it, did they ask you like, do you have a three-year plan? Do you have a five-year plan? Or were they sort of like, we just want to be in business with you and we believe in you and Steve? Uh, well, this was a weird one because uh, Steve and I had been uh, having lunch and saying, you know, it'd be fun to do something else, work together on a comedy again, but we didn't have an idea. And then he went in to take a meeting at Netflix and um, uh, they presented him with the idea of doing something about Space Force. And um, so he called me and he said, what about something about Space Force? Because that just got announced. And one of the things I always wanted to do was to do a military comedy because it's like a genre that hasn't been on the air in a while. And um, so I, I thought it was a great idea to do it. Uh, and so then we kind of built the show, you know, but the, the initial suggestion was actually a guy named Blair Fetter, who's a, a executive at Netflix. Uh, the season two trailer that we're going to premiere on Collider, it sells the fun and it shows some of the, the gags, if you will, but it doesn't, it doesn't reveal too much about the storyline. So what do you actually want to tell fans about season two? Well, I think the, the big picture is that we are concentrating on the gags more. It is more about these scenes, the comedy scenes between the cast and I think the stories are more personal and they're interesting and, you know, uh, but I don't think the point of the show so much is, um, you know, like a highly arced 
thing. You know what I mean? It's kind of like each episode is a fun adventure with these with this cast, and there's a loose structure to it. The, I guess the big structure this year is that with the new administration, the Space Force is much more underdogs because people are super skeptical of them in the new administration. So uh, we have a guest star, Tim Meadows, who's the new Secretary of Defense, and you know he's he's making it hard for. Uh, the guys at Space Force. So that's that's the overall theme. Um, I, Steve wrote the season two, episode one. And yeah. I'm just curious, was it something like, how did that get figured out? Did he say to you, oh, I'm just going to write the first episode? Or did you guys talk? And how, how does that get worked out? Um, well, uh, like I said, there was a sort of a post-mortem period where he and I sat down and we said, well, what was working? How do we change things to improve the experience? And um, I think he, um, I'm not, we didn't have a, that many of the same writers. We had a few same writers, um, but we've got a bunch of new writers. And uh, I think he kind of wanted to show the writer's room what he was going for in terms of tone. So, um, so he took the first one. The season one, and I believe season two are both 10 episodes. How does that number get figured out? Is that coming from Netflix? Is that coming from you guys? Um, actually, season two is seven episodes. You saw the whole season. Oh, I saw the whole thing. Well, I mean, it was a bit challenging because we shot the first season in Los Angeles before COVID. And we shot the second season like at the height of COVID in Vancouver, right? So it was, it was a different, um, uh, process. And I think seven episodes was good because, you know, we were able to, uh, I, I think, pull them off at a high level and, you know, avoid a shutdown. And, you know, it, it was probably as much as we could do under the, under the circumstances, I'd say. The first season, the episodes were like 35 minutes each. And a lot of season two, the episodes are more like 25 minutes. They're a little shorter. Was that, yeah. uh, was that as a result of COVID or was that a result of like, how did you sort of get like, because it is a, it's a different feeling. These episodes. Yeah, well, you know, it is a different feeling. These are very smart questions. Um, I'll say that one of the ways that we refocused the show on the cast was that we explored a lot of the ways that the the main series regular cast could interact with each other and i think that um season one that you know which is appropriate because you're establishing who the cast are and they don't all know each other or like each other in season one you know so you have a lot more stuff where characters are outward facing um if you know what i mean like they're uh you know like i don't know <clears throat> uh you know, Angela's story is uh, going to the moon, you know, and she's uh, with a whole bunch of astronauts and it's, you know, she's her individual story is that and someone else has a different individual story. Like um, now I think more of the stories are the various cast members relating to other cast members. So uh, you can kind of handle it in a shorter period of time. Uh, Lisa Kudrow was a bigger part of season one. She's part of season two, but she's not like a focal point, if you will, um, at least in my mind. Um, was no. there a reason for that, that you, you she's included, <laughs> but she's sort of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, again, I think it, I think she's included in a fun way. She's not one of the series regulars like the others. So we spent more time with them. And part of that was COVID too, because, you know, um, <clears throat> the rules in Canada required uh, a certain amount of quarantining. And so to have somebody show up and leave and then show up and leave and everything, it's just too, too much um, uh, for uh, if you weren't a series regular. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, so we, we, she's definitely in the show and she's super funny, but um, you know, I think we would probably try to get her more for a season three where we we had an easier shoot probably I, I i completely get it have you guys changed do you still have the same reason as to why she's in prison or have you changed that at all 
We haven't changed the backstory on what happened to put her in prison. Um, there's a scene where um, Aaron, Diana Silvers tells Patton Oswalt, who's uh, somebody up on a Mars probe. Uh, he, she tells him the whole story of why, uh, why she's in prison, but we, we don't necessarily tell the audience. <laughs> Um, what, when in the writing process, knowing that you were going to be dealing with COVID, knowing you're going to be shooting in Vancouver, how did that impact the writing in terms of, you know, you were maybe were coming up with ideas of things you wanted to do. And then you realized, wait, we, we can't do that. Like we're going to be, we really need to be thinking about being on a sound stage and not going on location too often or whatever that may be. Well, um, I wouldn't say we really changed the writing for COVID that much, but we were changing the writing for the fact that it was a new administration. And so Space Force was not being given all of the resources that they got in season one, um, you know, and, uh, and they were more underdogs. And so what that led to was it was slightly less busy in the halls, which was good for COVID because, you know, like having tons of extras walking in and out is, is, wasn't great. So, um, but that was part of the creative refocusing too, was to, to refocus it on our amazing cast and less on extras and spectacle, uh, which all was fine for COVID.